Paige Fletch, I'm Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform, and here's an audio version of my latest blog entitled, But Wait, There's More! Today we live in what many call the age of technological enlightenment. Moore's Law states that the number of transistors on a microchip doubles every two years, and that the cost of the computer is halved during that same time. So given this trend, while the speed and capabilities of computers will increase each year, the cost drops considerably. In our lives, we've seen the impact of this in several technology markets, computers, networking, and telephony. Heck, growing up, I only had seven television channels, and most of the programming was in black and white. I can still remember back in the mid-60s getting our first color television set yet still only be able to see some of the programming delivered in color. Many of my favorite shows remained in black and white. Now, when I look at Next Generation 911 technology, quite often I find that television is an excellent comparison when I use it to explain some of the many questions that most people have about that technology. Let's look at the building blocks of how a TV show is produced and delivered into your home and then compare that to Next Generation 911 networks and the various equipment components required to achieve that new emergency service. We'll start in the television studio with the television camera. That captures the initial image. Now, if that camera's in black and white, only a black and white image is going to be captured. If a color television camera is used, then we've got a color television picture. Pretty simple. Now, the next primary component in the broadcast chain is the TV transmitter. And again, if that transmitter is only capable of sending a black and white signal, then a black and white TV image is going to be transmitted in its original form. However, if we try to send a color image, it's going to be down converted into a black and white image. Now, conversely, if the television transmitter is capable of color, then both black and white camera images and the color camera images are passed in their original state. The Next Gen 911 network is also the same way. Now, the next component is the actual television set itself that's in your home. Again, if you've got a black and white TV, regardless of how the image was captured and regardless of how it was sent, the image that you're going to see is going to be black and white. But if you've got a color TV, a color camera was used, and a color transmitter sent you the signal, well, then you're going to receive a color picture. So the caveat here is that you can only receive the lowest common denominator or format. But as the color network or the next Jedi 911 network builds out to completion, you'll be able to receive the new data and new pictures because your job is already done. So you can see next generation 911 is very much the same type of architecture. Instead of the camera, we've got the data at the origination network. The carrier is the TV transmitter and the TV set is the PSAP or the 911 center. So until each one of these components is next-gen 911 capable, the ability to get the information from end-to-end is going to be limited. But, like any good infomercial on TV at 3 o'clock in the morning, but wait, there's more! You see, fortunately, Next Generation 911 is not just replacing the legacy E911 network. The various components are being built in parallel alongside of it. And there are transitional elements from old to new and new to old. That's part of the new network. Now, that's really important because this enables the intersection of the two technologies to intermingle with each other and coexist, allowing each element to make use of what it can do on either side of the technology curve. The dilemma that it actually creates in the industry is that some technology providers just either don't understand or don't know how to work with Next Gen 911. And in fact, most don't want to, as their tactic is to keep doing it the old way. Now, when you run across this, the question you need to ask is why? Because as new technology makes more capabilities affordable and more functional, remember Moore's Law, the profit margins become slimmer. So that directly translates to there being no financial incentive for the legacy solution providers to innovate and adopt 
new capabilities. You see, to them, the impact of next generation 911 is to their bottom line, and it actually becomes a net loss. Now, over the years, the legacy 911 solutions have become so expensive, many customers are being scared away by the price. In fact, just the other day, I was talking to a company that's being pushed into a major reconfig of its entire communications architecture, mainly because COVID-19 has forced them to move 80% of their entire workforce to their homes, and then doing that with IP-enabled phones. Now, while they were proactive in providing their employees with guidance in the various 911 capabilities of their corporate devices, they still shared a great concern about hard phones being placed in residences where a spouse or a child might use that device to call 911. Would they understand the differences and the limitations? Likely not. So we had a nice long discussion about the wonderful things that next generation 911 can do that solves that problem and the ability to route the calls properly. And they immediately responded with, well, wait a minute, that's all cool, Fletch, but we don't have the budget for that. And then they asked the question that I hate the most. What's the least we need to do to be compliant? That's when we started talking about innovation, technology. We talked about how Uber has changed the rideshare model. And they've done that with innovation that reduced costs. And then we worked on designing a few different solutions that not only provided more capabilities, but did so at a lower price point than the legacy solutions. We solved their compliance problem, we saved them some money, and we put the framework in place for next generation 911 services in their corporate network and provided them with a technology protection plan going forward. What we delivered was a new solution on the information superhighway going forward, where the legacy solutions that they were looking at just offered them an off-ramp down a dead-end road. Now, enabling 911 dialing on an MLTS telephone system is not only a federal law, but critical in the enterprise to protect the life safety of their visitors and workers. That's easily fixed. But 85% of all 911 calls come from cell phones. And capturing that 911 call event from a smartphone is a whole new technology that the 911 Inform platform easily enables using new geofence technology. This is something that you need to check out, and I urge every IT administrator to do some research or assign someone to do the research on the capabilities that next generation emergency services and the network deliver. Challenge what's out there as the norm, and whatever you buy, make sure it's fully explained and it meets your expectations. That wraps up this audio version of my latest blog, but wait, there's more. I'm Mark Fletcher, ENP, and I'm the Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform. Follow me on Twitter at Fletch911 and check out the latest innovation in next generation 911 solutions for the enterprise at 911inform.com. Take care, and we'll catch you next time. Stay safe and have a great day.